Hi there, it's Helen Edwards and I am here to review some beautiful Australian picture books. And these are five Australian picture books that uh, feature country and um, the stunning nature that surrounds us here in Australia. I buy and collect and read picture books all the time and I think that everybody should continue to read picture books. Um, picture books are very special because the relationship between the illustrations and the text um, is it very much weaves the story. So the illustrations are not a background, they're not a backdrop. Both of those have equal weighting and they together tell a story and that's what, when you get a winning picture book. Um, I love the topics because I love nature. Um, it's one of the things that I'm very interested in and passionate about. So I'm going to start with Open Your Heart to Country by Jasmine Seymour. And she's a very talented um, woman. She is um, a Dada woman um, and she has uh, actually won the CBCA New Illustrator Award for her book Baby Business uh, and she speaks several languages. Um, she's an activist um, and she uh, creates stunning words and pictures. And this book is actually um, written with Dialogue and English. So you can learn as you read the story some of the Dialogue words. Um, and I found that really um, well, interesting and powerful because not only are the illustrations stunning and the colours, um, but it helped me to understand a little bit around some of the language. I may not have been getting it always correct in my pronunciation, but the point of this is that we are learning, listening, reading, seeing, um, and keeping open to understanding the many, 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 many different languages and stories that belong to Australia's First Nations people. And so I think it's important um, to actually read these books with, and with your children, with your classrooms, and also for yourself. So I highly recommend this book. Um, open your heart to country, listen to its language, learn how to speak its songs. So Open Your Heart to Country by Jasmine Seymour is my first book. Jetty Jumping, which won the CBCA, the Children's Book Council of Australia Picture Book Award uh, last year in 2022. Uh, it's written by Andrea Rowe, who is actually a friend of mine and a lovely woman prolific um, children's author and illustrated by Hannah Somerville who is also one of Australia's most talented and awarded uh, picture book illustrators. This has quickly become a classic. Um, it's connected clearly with many many people, children and adults and I know that it's been selling out and selling out and getting reprinted and reprinted. Um, and it's a story about um, about being brave and about overcoming fears and about jumping into life. And I have actually reviewed um, Open Your Heart to Country and Jetty Jumping um, over on my blog at helenedwardswrites.com. So if you hop over there, you'll find my full reviews as well as links out to where you can find the books and follow these um, authors and illustrators. So while Miller's friends take big, brave jumps off the jetty, Miller stays on the blistering wood, scared of what lurks below. But when Miller accidentally falls off the edge, she discovers the beauty of the deep dark sea and her summer changes forever. Andrea Rowe and Hammer Somerville perfectly capture the challenges of childhood and the joys of letting go in this homage to summer. So uh, the illustrations are very much in the palette of um, Australian beaches with the sand and the jetties. Um, the text is written in a way that actually helps to uh, make the text flow and the illustrations are quite dreamy um, and soft and it really is a, a lovely story, um, Jetty Jumping. The third book I'm going to review, Wonderful Wasps, um, and I went to the launch of this recently in Adelaide. It is written by an Adelaide-based author who is prolific. She has written many, 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 many picture books, um, been awarded a number of times. Um, and her name is Katrina Germain, and it's gorgeously illustrated by Suzanne Houghton. And I adore the colours in this book, this green that reminds you of gum leaves um, with these stunning wasps. And the thing about this book, this is a non-fiction book. And when you think of wasps, 
you often think of being stung and people feel quite uncomfortable about wasps. But the thing about wasps is that they are remarkable and they are wonderful. So I'm going to read you the back. What do you know about wasps? There are wasps that shimmer in shades of bright blue and green. There are some without wings and some almost too tiny to see. Some capture spiders while others nest in fruit or mud. With over 12,000 species found in Australia, Wonderful Wasps brings the beauty and importance of native wasps to life and reminds us every creature matters in its own wonderful way. It's lovely. My 14-year-old and 23-year-old, um, when they started looking at this book, read it all the way from front to back. We're discussing wasps. We're talking about some wasps that we've had um, in our own garden um, and we're looking for wasps. Uh, and so it's a great one for um, your own library at home and also for schools because it's got that component of, of learning about, um, about wasps and it could dovetail off into many different um, projects. So Wonderful Wasps by Katrina Germain and Suzanne Houghton. Our Dreaming um, by Curly Saunders and Dub Leffler I have also reviewed um, on my blog. And this is another First Nations um, collaboration, again with those stunning colours of Australia. Uh, and this is a book which I have also reviewed. And it has got some language too. Uh, it says award-winning First Nations storytellers, Gundungara raised Gunai woman Kelly Saunders, and Bigam, sorry, Bigamabal man, Dub Leffler, explore a deep love and respect for country and all her spirits, past, present and beyond. Gujigar, little one, walk with me. I want to tell you our dreaming as the elders told it to me. And again, there is uh, some uh, language in here so that you can try to practice. And you just saw me stumble a minute ago and it's not, it's like learning any language. You need to listen and you need to try to understand and have a go at saying some of the words. Good you go. And we keep our dreaming alive and it's about speaking in mother tongue. And that's a really important thing about books like this. Not only are they beautiful, um, not only are they telling stories, but they're also helping to keep some of the language alive and showing children who live um, anywhere in the world but particularly for Australian children to understand um, that there are so many stories, histories and languages um, that belong to First Nations people across the country. Um, and picture books are a lovely way to do that because you get this combination of the text, um, of the interpretation of the colours and the way that that actually moves um, with the illustrations. So our dreaming, uh, Curly Saunders and Dub Leffler. The final one I'm going to do today is um, from a little bit earlier than um, the other books that I've spoken about. Um, but this has recently won another award. It's won a number of awards. And it is Ella and the Ocean by Leanne Tanner and Jonathan Bentley. And you can see slightly different colours here. So we've had um, these gorgeous nighttime, night sky sort of colours um, with the bright flowers. Um, by Jasmine Seymour and then we've had the blues and the beach um, with jetty jumping these um, gorgeous purple greys of the night sky again um, and the washed out sort of greens and muted pastel tones um, of eucalypts and, um, and flowers these startling colours of the wasps against the green background. And this one is very much um, that outback, drought, dry kind of feeling. And yet it's about the ocean. And the reason is, is because this book is about dreaming. It's about following your dreams. It's about hope. And it's also about the beauty of the ocean. So Ella lived in the red dirt country where the earth was as dry as old bones and it hadn't rained for years and years and years. One night Ella dreamt of the ocean and from there Ella finds out the dreams of her parents and her grandmother and they go on a journey which results 
in all of them coming home in a drought time where there is often a lot of misery and exhaustion and hopelessness with increased hope and filled with that from being at the ocean. So Ella and the Ocean, Leanne Tanner and Jonathan Bentley. So that's just five Australian picture books that I think should become classics that all centre around um, Australian flora and fauna. There's many more um, and if you want to subscribe below you'll catch my latest videos. Hop over to HelenEdwardsWrites.com to get my book reviews and all of the background around my own work um, and I will see you soon. Okay, enjoy the picture books.